Induction loops or hearing assistance systems have been around for quite a while and there's quite a lot of those inst these installed around the countryside. An induction loop is a coil of wire around the space that's uh, going to be used by an audience and by feeding an audio signal into that loop we can actually detect it with the pickups that are applied uh, the pickups that are fitted to many of the hearing aids people are wearing. So the loop creates a current flow, the current flow produces a magnetic field, a hearing aid with a T setting, a T switch um, on it, will have a little coil of wire in it which can detect that uh, magnetic field and make it possible to hear a, a really nice clear signal from that, um, that induction loop. In 2004, a specification for these was adopted and they were added into the building code. And so, um, slowly, it's increasing that the requirements for these are being included with building specifications and, along with that, the testing and certifying that the systems meet those specifications. If you've got a system that was installed before 2004, these specs don't apply to you. So as long as you've got a system that works effectively and functions as required, you see it. If you've got a system done after 2004, it should meet the new code, the specification, and it should have regular testing done to make sure that it continues to comply. Systems that don't have enough signal level are going to mean that the person using them is going to hear too much other unwanted noise. And if you don't have enough frequency response that's at least to five, flat to 5 kilohertz, um, there's going to be issues with clarity and understanding what's being said. One of the, or some of the problems we encounter at, um, with buildings is noise from the mains wiring. This is usually a combination of hum and buzz, but it is buzz which is the most annoying component of it. And it results when the wiring has got um, phasor neutral spread apart a little bit. The further spread apart they are, the greater the ra radiation of the signal is going to be. And it can also occur when we've got um, earth currents flowing where they shouldn't flow. Another problem that comes up is when we've got um, a lot of steel in a building or metal in a building and um, think about reinforced concrete floors or steel decks with concrete laid over the top. This acts like a short on the loop and this causes a huge loss of signal. It absorbs a lot of the energy out of the loop but it particularly absorbs the high frequencies so we get low level um, within the loop area particularly as you move towards the centre of the loop further away from the wiring and you get significant loss of the high frequencies. To solve that problem we need to make the loop width narrower and it would come down to typically 3 metres in bad cases or severe cases 2 metres um, loop width and that's going to bring the level up and make it more even across the loop and at the same time we're going to have to apply a bit of high frequency boost to correct for the high frequency loss which is greatest, whether the losses are greatest. The problem is that most rooms are going to be wider than your 2 or 3 metre loop area and so we're going to have to put multiple loops in a room to get the coverage we need of the floor and of the audience areas. That's fine if you've got aisles that occur at suitable locations and you can run those loops in the aisles but if not some people may find themselves sitting above a loop cable and be sitting in a null area where they're going to get no help from the induction loop. To solve that a second loop can be laid which is offset from the primary loops and um, this the second degree loop needs to be driven from a phase shifter so that its signal is 90 degrees phase shifted relative to the primary loop. The two loops will add together, they won't cancel and they have very little interaction with each other but you get even coverage across the room with no holes, no dead spots, no nulls happening. So it's a great solution. The problem is it's going to cost more. There's more equipment, there's more cable, there's this phase shifter added to the system. But it is an effective system for where you've got movable seating and a lot of rooms, a lot of churches, a lot of centres. The seating can be rearranged depending on the way the room is going to be used. At the other end of the induction loop system, we've got to have an input that's going to be, make it effective. If there's a sound system in the room, we use the, the microphones that are being used for the sound system to drive the loop and get a good clear signal into the hearing aid loop. If we place a microphone at a great distance from the person speaking, then we may as well forget the loop as the person's own hearing aids are going to do the job as effectively as that distant microphone would do it. So 
good clear sound from up close to the sound source is a vital requirement to make a loop system move effectively. And increasingly, um, hearing aid loops are being installed in counters and ticket booths and bank tellers and, and information desks and things like that. And it's essential there that a microphone be installed which is pointing at the person's mouth who's uh, providing the service. If we have to put a loop into a existing building, stage one is to do a, a measurement of the background noise, make sure that the room is suitable for an induction loop, and then lay a, a test loop of a spe specific size in the area to be um, tested, and then do measurements of the applied current, applied voltage, and magnetic strength that that loop produces. From that we can design an effective loop to meet the standard to cover the room and to work effectively. Thank you for your uh, attention and if you've got any questions email them, email addresses on the website there. Gordon Pryor signing off.